Dear brothers and sisters, today the Holy Orthodox Church throughout the world commemorates all the saints from time immemorial, the saints who have lived righteous lives before the coming of Christ and the saints who have lived righteous lives from the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ into the world until this very day. St. Theophan the Recluse reminds us that the, the Church commemorates all the saints today because, because of our shortcomings, because of our limited understandings. We don't understand, we have not identified all of the saints who have lived in this world. The Orthodox Church is the only church throughout Christendom that goes to such exhaustive lengths to ensure that we preserve in our memory the lives of countless saints. But there are still many other people whom we have never known, but God knows. And so just as every saint has a day when he or she is commemorated, on this day, St. Theophan the Recluse says, we commemorate all the saints, all those saints whom we know, whom the Church has recorded their histories and accomplishments of faith, and also we commemorate all those other saints whom only God knows. And we do this every year, the first Sunday after Pentecost, because they are living fruits of the grace of the Holy Spirit. These saints have showed the world and all of us how to live a righteous life. We remember from the very beginning the, the holy apostles and what we see most prominently is zeal. Zeal to preach the truth and joy to spread the news of the resurrection. Such zeal and joy that were so strong and profound that have moved them to do great things. And likewise, the martyrs, they were willing to give their blood, to lay down their very lives so as not to commune with falsehood or evil, so as to always preserve their faith in God and show their devotion to Him. Many people are willing to devote many things, but the martyrs show us to what length we are to devote our lives. We see holy hierarchs, bishops and patriarchs for centuries who have gone to great personal expense and expense of strength and health to ensure that the truth is preached. We see venerable ones, monastics, who were driven to go into far away places of extreme weather, whether it be extreme cold or extreme heat, whether they lived in the deserts or in the wilderness, but they were moved to go far away so as to never be distracted in their prayer because prayer gave them so much joy and transfiguration that they were going to, willing to go any length to ensure not to lose that. <clears throat> and likewise, there were many other righteous men and women living in the world, living as married couples, who first and foremost loved God. Yes, they loved their families, their spouse, their children, but they put their love for God first. We hear this in today's gospel. We are not worthy if we love our children more than God, he says. If we love our spouse, if we love our parents, if we love our home, our native lands, Rodina. If we love all any of these things more than we love God, Christ says, you are not worthy of me. 
that causes us to stop and pause. Because we often think, or at least we should often remind ourselves of the people who are really important in our lives. Those whom we really love. Of course, married couples, there's no one else in the world, human, whom you should love more than your spouse. And parents understand the length of selfless love by loving with great sacrifice their children. So we think about that. And today Christ reminds us, yes, it's good to love each other with such fervency. But we are called to love God even more than that. How is that possible? All the saints, the groups of saints that I just outlined for us, they showed us how that's possible. People with great zeal, with great joy, with great thirst for God's grace, with much fulfillment in prayer and fasting, and much dedication even to the point of sacrifice and death, it can be done. You know, brothers and sisters, we're human. We interact with people. And we often compare our lives to those around us. We often accept life in society as what is, quote unquote, normal. We set the goal of our life to at least be normal, accepted in society, not stick out, not be a thorn in people's sides, not be a show-off. We just want to be normal. But today, with the reading of the Gospel from St. Matthew and the commemoration of all the saints, we really have to question, what is normal? Is our society today in 2019 normal? Is what our schools are teaching our kids today normal? Is what we see on television, on the internet, normal? I think we could all agree that what is normal today, 30 years ago, wasn't normal. That's dismissing any technology, any advances in medicine. It's just overall attitudes, philosophies, interactions. What is normal today wasn't normal 30 years ago and certainly wasn't normal 60, 100 years ago. So that begs the question. Pontius Pilate says, what is truth then? How are we to live? What values must we follow? If what is valued today wasn't valued yesterday, how are we to live? What is normal is what we read in Scripture, plain and simple. There is no other normal. What is normal is how the saints have lived the last 2,000 years. And yes, if you compare the lives of the saints to how people are living now, if you compare to the lives of the saints to the person you see in the mirror, and if you see a contrast, then it is up to us to do what we need to do to live a normal life as the gospel teaches us to live.
Because God's truth is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It doesn't change. Christ, yesterday in the Gospel, gives us a great goal. He says, be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. A lofty goal. A goal that only Christ Jesus Himself alone throughout all history was able to accomplish. But nevertheless, He knowing our weaknesses, our shortcomings and failings still gives us this same goal because when we do that and when we live for the sake of Christ, we find life and we understand what is normal. And so, brothers and sisters, let us always remember the saints and how they struggled to live a righteous life. Let us look at the saints to see what they had to do to pursue holiness and perfection. And first and foremost, let us always run to Christ, our Lord and God, asking for strength and grace. Because he says, without me, you can do nothing. We desperately need his grace to be patient, understanding, faithful, persevering, loving, selfless, sacrificial, and faithful. So, when we do that, the world around us can change. And that's okay. Because we have Christ as our foundation. We have the saints to show us that even though the waves and storms of life beat against us, if we have Christ as our love and our foundation, if we love Him more than anyone or anything else, we will never fail because He is with us always and will never abandon us, even to the end of the world. That is what is normal for us. Amen.